Test, test, test. Test, test, test. What's going on, guys? So, today we're talking about Mustang problems. I just had like 20 minutes, so I just wanted to talk about Mustang problems. I had a 2015 Mustang GT. I've got a 2021 Mustang Mach 1 currently. And some of the problems I wanted to talk about that I experienced with my Mustang bar before I got rid of it. So I traded the 2015 Mustang for the 2021 Mach 1. There was a few problems that I had with the 15 that I wanted to talk about. They're pretty common. So the first thing was the water pump. So if you're not, if you don't know about the water pump, basically on the 20. 15 to 2017 Mustangs, the water pump failure is pretty common at like 30 to 40,000 miles. That thing will fail. Um, there's, there's a difference in the water pump design. And if you go to Levittown Ford, you can order a water pump and it has a different design. But if you're currently driving a 15 to 17, you haven't changed the water pump, you know, and you've got over 30 or 40,000 miles. Those cars are about seven years old now. So mine, my water pump failed at, so here's what happened. Here's how, here's how it went down. Basically I started hearing a noise. Uh, it sounded like a throw out bearing. So essentially you could hear the wob, it was wobbling. Essentially it was the, the water pump failing, but it sounded like a squeaky throw out bearing. If you know what that sounds like. If you guys are in the chat and you guys can hear me, just give me a thumbs up or a uh, a comment to let me know the audio is okay. I'm assuming it is because no one said anything yet. Uh, the water pump, though, basically slowly went out. I didn't see any water leaking under the car, but what I noticed was, you know, basically, uh, eventually the car just started smoking and coolant went everywhere and everything. But all right, cool. Thanks, man. Cigarillo Slim 615. You in the 615, bro? All right. So basically what happened was the um, the water pump fails. You got to order a new one. They're super cheap. They're like 60 or 70 bucks. And you can put it on. It's like three bolts, three or four bolts. The hard part is getting the water pump in. Uh, it's all aluminum. So the hard part is getting it in kind of straight on. Word. And so, um, and it's, it's inexpensive. You should probably just change it. All you have to do is put a, a thing, get the tensioner loosened up a couple bolts, pull the belt off, pull the water pump off. It's super easy. Take a couple of the intake pieces off. I broke one of the IAT sensors off. I had to use JB weld to fix it. Um, just be careful with those sensors. Other than that, it's pretty simple. So the water pump is really easy. Um, to replace and it's inexpensive to replace it takes about an hour and it's probably going to fail on you if you have a 15 to 17 and it hasn't failed already um the next thing is the uh, yeah like i said you can get those levittown ford for 50 to 75 bucks um, i have a shipping discount code too hit me up if you need that uh the next thing is probably the air conditioning that a lot of people had the ac go bad mine didn't have that go bad the next thing would be the reverse camera that definitely went out on mine. Um, and you can fix it yourself. And now that I think they have a TSB or a recall on that. So I think you can get that fixed if they have the parts. Um, the next thing is was really weird. I had like, it was almost like a wheel sensor that went out and it was causing, I believe what was happening, it was causing the it was either it was either a wheel sensor that had something to do with traction control. It was almost causing like an intermittent misfire where partial throttle of the car would like stutter. And you would think that that would be ignition related or something like that, but it wasn't. It was I think it was from a dirty wheel wheel speed sensor, something like that. Eventually it actually sorted itself out. I thought I had a serious problem, but it actually sorted itself out. Um so I didn't have to replace anything. So the primary, so another big thing with the 15 to 17s is oil consumption. So if you just bought the car, when I bought mine brand new, it was essentially um, burning so much oil that I didn't have to change the filter. Like it was burning so much oil that it was like, it was so bad and it stopped, it stopped burning oil. But so, so if you've got a coyote and you're not checking the oil, and you haven't checked the oil like every thousand miles for for a bit, or if you if you haven't checked the engine oil, you know to see if it's low or not. You should probably do that, especially if you're new to the cars, um, because 
especially the new cars, they will burn oil, man. Um, so I checked the Mach 1. The Mach 1 is not burning oil. But the 15, I think it burned like a quart every like 1,500 miles, something like that. A quart every 1,000 miles. Uh, the first maybe, you know, 10,000 miles. And then what happened after 10,000 miles, uh, quit burning oil. But you want to make sure you don't run it out of oil. Because if you're doing a 10,000 change interval, you could run it all the way out of oil almost. So I, I emailed Ford and they, or I looked up, I researched it a bunch. And essentially those motors are, they burn oil the first 10,000 miles. That's, they called it normal oil consumption, right? So no, no, this Thomas, what's up, Thomas? He's got a, no water pump issues on his 16 yet. 53,000 miles. Evap has a leak. So I add R134 every eight to nine months. Camera's off occasionally. No burning oil, but my turn signal just stopped working regularly this week. Yeah. Camera is off occasionally. So that's how mine started. I was lucky with the air conditioner, but the camera was also intermittent. Um, and you got an AC problem. I don't need to double check the oil of them. I'm 19. I don't think I've had issue with it burning oil. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so essentially, like, if you haven't checked it, just go check it just for the heck of it. Because um, when I first bought mine, I tried to do the proper break-in procedure and everything. And it just wouldn't. It still had it still had oil problems. It's still burning oil. And I was afraid, like, I had a dud. It was my first new car, and I was really trying to take care of it. And it was just burning oil like crazy. So it eventually stopped. Uh, the other thing, though, speaking of oil, so I switched to Mobile One and I was, uh, what happened was essentially I switched to Mobile One. So on the, also there's on, I don't remember which years, but they have valve cover bolt holes, um, studs or screws, I guess, that hold the valve cover on. And some of them have more bolts than other year models. So you're actually going to get a leak on the rear valve cover. So I had a rear, I had an oil leak on the rear valve cover on the driver's side. And they're pre, some of them, there's, it's like they didn't drill them from the factory. They didn't come drilled from the factory is what it was. So uh, you can take it to Ford and they'll actually do that for you from what I saw. It was like a TSB also. So uh, it, what it was causing, like I smelled oil. And I went back there and it's after the oil change and I could see a drip um, going down and I, I had them change the oil filter like four times. And this is like on a 40,000 mile car that's been really well taken care of, not really beaten up or anything. Um, and it was dripping down the back of the block, down the oil filter, off onto the exhaust manifold and causing smoke. So that's something. Um, so what you can do is you can go back through and retorque all of the bolts that are on the valve cover uh you know you can retorque them and then if that doesn't stop the leak you can go in and i believe what they'll do is they that ford actually like sent you know sent in a thing where you're, where the, the mechanics are supposed to drill a new hole and put a new bolt in there so so that's interesting so essentially um that was the most common problems that i have with mine I didn't have the AC problem, um, but primarily it was just the water pump. That that one that's the main thing that'll get you stranded is if your water pump goes out. You know you don't want to you don't want your water pump to go out, right? Because you end up with um, you're stuck. I had to limp at home. I had to like get a friend follow me home, and then you know it was just bad news. It was really bad. But I limped it home. I limped the car home and I uh, changed the water pump in the garage by myself. Uh, never had worked on that Coyote motor before. And it wasn't hard. And the part was cheap. And um, it was easier than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, I recommend you checking. I would I recommend just buying one and putting it in the back of the car. and keep it Because if it goes bad, I mean, unless you've got AAA, um, but yeah, you'll probably hear it. You'll probably hear it making noise. If you have a manual transmission, you'll hear it like squeaking a little bit and rattling. I have a good ear for that stuff and I didn't even notice. Uh, I couldn't tell what it was. I just thought it was the clutch, like the throwout bearing or something like that. So 
All right, guys, I've got to run off. I hope you guys have a good day. Hopefully that was helpful. Catch you in the next video.